Welcome. We gather together today to take our part at the end of Marilyn Carlson's lifelong journey to God. We travel alongside her with our prayers, the gospel story, all with a mixture of grief and with hope. Whether you are here at Peace Now or watching this service uh, later on, uh, thank you for your presence and thank you for your care for Marilyn and her family here today. And on behalf of Marilyn's family, there is an invitation extended to all of us. Following this service, you are invited to a reception at the home of Sue and Pete Cottom in Savage. Their address is printed in the bulletin. We continue. If you are able, please stand. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a baptism like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Marilyn. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call. We are gathered in our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Um. reading from the 121st Psalm. I lift my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? 
My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps your, you, you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. From this time on and forevermore. Here ends this reading. reading from the 112th Psalm. Praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. They rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice, for the righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. Here ends the reading. A reading from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. The Gospel of our Lord. Marsha and uh, Mike and Tammy, Sue, all of Maryland's many family and friends, grace and peace to you from the one who lived for us, who died for us, and who now claims victory over every grave. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, Maryland has played a trick on us. Uh, she has played a trick on all of us gathered here today to remember her and to thank God for her. A trick. I don't know if she intended to, but she did. Let me tell you what she did. Marilyn picked out for her funeral service, along with the 121st Psalm, the gospel reading that you just heard. That ends, you are the light of the world, a city built on a hill cannot be hid. Then, and here's the trick, Marilyn just stopped right there. Marilyn could have kept going, just as Matthew does. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. She could have included that, but she didn't. I think Marilyn wanted us to stop where she did for a reason. She didn't want us to give a launching point to talk about her too much, to talk about her as a giver of light, all the ways her light got out from under that bushel basket. Maybe it was her modesty, maybe it was her Swedishness, uh, I don't know, but she didn't want us to do it. Well, Marilyn, we're sorry to disappoint you. Your trick didn't work. We're going to say a bit about how your light shined and how you reflected the love of God, our Heavenly Father, for all of us. Yes, Marilyn was a child of the light. I think she got that at the very start. Back in South Minneapolis, where she was born, to Bob and Ruth Carlson on July 17, 1952, the youngest of three children along with Mike and Marcia. Early on, she was baptized into Christ, likely at Epiphany Lutheran Church, 
Those gathered on that day heard Jesus' words again. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The light of the world says to those sitting right in front of him and said to Marilyn at her baptism, you, Marilyn, are the light of the world. They got named a child of the light, even though they did absolutely nothing to deserve it. They got the t-shirt before they even ran the race. It was theirs no matter what. That was the grace part. But what they did with that light was up to them. And Marilyn's light shined from the very beginning. Marilyn, Marilyn was a child of the light. Over the years, I have heard stories about growing up in a great neighborhood. There was church and Sunday school and vacation Bible school, Northrop School, Ramsey Junior High, and there was next door neighbor Sue. They lived so close that the two of them could talk window to window, bedroom to hallway, eating popcorn and drinking Kool-Aid from glass jars, riding their bikes around Lake Nokomis, the continuous game of Monopoly on the front porch in the summer, so began a lifelong friendship. There were summers at the lake, at Fox Lake. It was a great neighborhood to grow up in, a great time. But her growing up wasn't a free-for-all, uh, not with her mother Ruth around. Marilyn remembered that she could give the evil eye when she disapproved of something, but her growing up in South Minneapolis was good. Marilyn was a child of the light. Marilyn graduated from Washburn High School in 1970. She went to business school and she learned key punching. She worked at Valspar Paint Company. The family moved to Eden Prairie in 1979. And then in 1985, she found what she called her other family. Marilyn began working at Delhi Express and she worked there for 32 years until her retirement in 2017. Throughout all those years working in the tech department, she was a child of the light. One has only to read and listen to what others thought of Marilyn. Listen to just some of them. You were my work lunch buddy every day at 12 p.m. at the Delhi Express. The conversations we shared were all so precious to us those days of 10 plus years never failed our laughter and conversations. Another, thank you for sharing her with our company. She was just a great person who had a smile for everyone. And still another, I cannot remember a time when she didn't have a big smile and a happy greeting for me or anyone she met at work. She had a great sense of humor and was just a very special person. As others have said, you may find comfort in all the people that she touched in her life. And those are just a few. Marilyn was a child of light. But Marilyn didn't work all the time. She loved sports. She was a season ticket holder of the North Stars for 25 seasons. I am told that she and Sue sat in the rowdier section of Met Sports Center. Sue didn't tell me that part. <laughs> and it wasn't so much about the game, it was about being with Sue and it was about being with friends. Sue says that oftentimes when they were driving home from a hockey game, she, Sue would ask, well, what was the score of the game? And Marilyn's answer was, I don't know. <laughs> it was about people, it was about being with friends. Wherever she was, Marilyn was a child of the light. But that wasn't the only activity Marilyn was involved with. There was the Ostomy Association, the Gustavus uh, Adolphus Women's Auxiliary, the Tops Club. Marilyn was a, a dedicated fan of TV Jeopardy and Grey's Anatomy. There was the Minnesota Twins. She loved the Twins. And she never missed a game. She would remind us today, there are still a lot of games to play. 
At least I'm pretty sure she would say that. And there was church. Marilyn was a member of this congregation for over 40 years. Not just merely a member, but an involved, engaged part of the life of this congregation. She called it a second home. There were very few church services and gatherings that Marilyn missed, and her presence was always graceful. There wasn't a judgmental bone in her body. And then she took up where her mother, mom left off and was part of the quilters, making quilters for the newly baptized and for those in need. And Marilyn was a child of the light and sought that light too always wanting to learn. She always uh, wanted to grow. She was part of the weekly Bible study on Wednesday mornings and in book groups as recently as last fall. And the group was studying a book on racial justice. And there was Marilyn saying, I never knew. I never knew. Open to the light, open to new light. And then saying, what can I do? What can I do? Marilyn was a child of the light. And never more so than in what, in spite of what, she suffered over the years. Marilyn got colon cancer some 38 years ago. And for these many years since, she battled many medical issues. But here's the thing. Marilyn did not pass on her pain and her suffering to others. She took on the challenges with remarkable courage and strength and kindness. And as Tammy described so very, very well, Marilyn was always accepting and affirming and faithful. Three perfect words. Most of us had no idea all of what Marilyn was going through, but her family and close friends knew. And Mike and Marsha and Tammy and Sue were there for her in so many ways, just as she had been present for them. She loved them and they loved her. And I had the privilege of being a bystander to see the countless ways that this whole family cared for and comforted Marilyn. Love you and love you more. It kept going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. That's just what children of the light do. And when there was nothing more to be done for her, Marilyn accepted that reality with grace all the way to the end. Marilyn has a special relationship with one of her doctors, the chief surgeon at the U, Dr. Acromedon, he treated Marilyn and he loved to come and see her. And when it became clear that he could no longer help Marilyn as a surgeon, he became a messenger of hope. He said to Marilyn, look for the bright light. Now, the book of Revelation contains a remarkable vision of a new heaven and a new earth. Revelation pictures a world with no more tears or pain or sadness or disease, along with big banquets of good food. And we hear God will wipe away every tear from our eyes and death will be no more. And then God who is seated on the throne will say, see, I am making all things new. God has always been in the business of making things new. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we trust that this world is not the end of the story. And we trust that ultimately, we do not belong only to each other. We belong to the one who has created and redeemed us. And we trust that nothing in all the world, not even death, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you continue reading in Revelation, the vision continues. All the saints of God are gathered around the throne, and there is this. There is no need 
for a lamp or a sun, for the Lord God is their light. All who have walked as children of the light are gathered around this throne. And Marilyn, a child of the light, is there. Marilyn has found the bright light. The light has found her. The light of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to Marilyn Carlson, and thanks be to God for giving us her to know and to love. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation with those they love. Grant us grace to entrust Marilyn to your never-failing love which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. Merciful God, you heal the broken in heart and bind up the wounds of the afflicted. Strengthen us in our weakness, calm our troubled spirits, and dispel our doubts and fears. In Christ, rising from the dead, you conquer death and open the gates to everlasting life. Renew our trust in you, we pray, that by the power of your love we shall one day be brought together again with Marilyn and with all your people. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Marilyn. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 